Um, welcome to my new video. Um, uh, it's Robin, and um, if you haven't seen my video before, um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, about uh, the spinach smoothie that I made today, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about koshers and bugs and the um, implications uh, for eating more fresh foods and raw foods, etc. So, um, I made a smoothie today. Um, thank you so much to Natasha from Raw Radiant Health um, for the smoothie recipe. Um, it was super easy. I put in uh, two bananas, um, blueberries, um, that I had frozen in the refrigerator, um, and two cups of spinach and a little water. And um, it was just amazing. Um, it was supposed to be a beginner green smoothie, so it was supposed to be, you know, for beginners, which I am, so that worked out perfectly for me, but it turned out not to be green for me. It was actually a beautiful, lovely purple blueberry shade, and um, and I put a lot of spinach in. I really did, I promise, and the kids watched the video. Natasha, you're amazing. The, my children watched your video, and they just were so excited to try this movie, which ordinarily I don't think they would have done with after seeing me put all that spinach in it. But they were just wild to try it, and then they drank it all up, and all of them had some. Um, the six-year-old, the, the almost four-year-old, and the, the two-year-old all just got gulped it down. So what an amazing way to help your kids get um, to get their greens, to get more more vegetables, that's just amazing. So what was, I, oh, I said what was in it already, two bananas, um, blueberries, like a cup of blueberries maybe, maybe not a cup, and this was enough, we, we shared it for four people, so it was probably, you know, two and a half servings maybe, because um, the kids did not have eight ounces, um, and, um, and two cups of spinach and a little water, and that was it, and then it was just yum. So I'm really excited. I feel very. I feel like that was a huge boost of confidence to make that and drink it. And I'm really interested to try some more savory type smoothies. Um, so uh, my blender worked really beautifully. Oh, I put ice cubes in it too. I put two or three ice cubes just to get it a little cooler. Even though my blueberries were frozen. Okay. So um, I. I um, wanted to talk a little bit about um, checking your produce for bugs. Um, this is mostly a cautious issue, mostly an issue for people who are interested in keeping kosher, but um, there are other people who are really, really interested in not taking any kind of life at all, any kind of animal life, and so they would be very meticulous about um, checking their produce for bugs as well. I know that some Hindus um, do that as well. So, um, so it's not kosher to eat bugs. It just isn't. There's, it's stated, I think, six different times in the Torah that you shouldn't eat bugs. So it's a pretty heavy prohibition. Um, and sadly, a lot of religious Jewish people take that as a reason not to eat produce, not to eat organic produce, um, because it can be a little bit of a chore to check your produce for infestation. But um, there's really very few things that can't be checked, really. Um, Raspberries and blackberries are very, very difficult to check. That being said, um, if you're intending on, if you're picking your blackberries or raspberries and intending on you using them in a puree, um, it's fine to go ahead, pick them, rinse them, just like anybody else would, and then puree them because the prohibition is against eating a whole bug, not eating little pureed bug parts. I know, delicious, huh? Um, but you don't want the bug in there. You don't, you're not adding the bug for flavor. And when you have a pureed bug, it's less than 60, 160th of the total mixture. 
Um, so it's fine to go ahead and have pureed things, which is why you can have pureed blackberry jam, because the, the blackberry is pureed. Um, I'm not a rabbi, by the way, obviously. So if you have questions about this, you should check with your local Orthodox rabbi. Um, absolutely. You should find out what the standard in your community is. And you should, um, you, if you um, don't have a resource, there's an excellent produce checking um, guide at the Seattle VOD, which is Seattle, S-E-A-T-T-L-E, VOD, V-A-A-D, all one word, seattlevod.org. Um, and they have a really nice um, produce checking guide. Um, as far as spinach goes and the, the leafy greens that we grow in my garden, um, we do not put pesticides on the, um, on the plants. So, um, when I'm out there, I kind of keep my eye out for infestation. Um, does it look like I'm having a bug problem? And when you're out there in the garden, it's, it's easier to tell because you'll see little clouds of things floating around. Now, once you get them inside, there's, you still should check, absolutely. Um, if it seems like there's a bug problem, if my garden is infested, I'll stop eating the produce and I'll find something else to do with it. So that's the way it goes. Um, and that has happened to me before. But um, as far as checking spinach, I just go into checking spinach because I'm running a little late. Apparently, I'm very long-winded. So um, there's two different ways to check spinach. You can wash and check every leaf of spinach individually, and I often do that. Uh, it's absolutely, it seems to me like a very thorough, nice way to check the, the spinach, but it takes a long time, and it uses a lot of water. So um, if you're not excited about that, um, you can put your spinach in a big bowl with um, a surfactant, some kind of vegetable washing detergent. And these are sold um, in the grocery store. There are also um, very gentle ones sold in the health food store. Um, I'm not sure if those qualify because just vinegar is not good enough. So again, check with your local Orthodox rabbi on if on um, whether a particular surfactant is going to be reasonable or uh, halakhically approved. And um, what you do is you submerge all of your produce in a big bowl, all of your spinach, and then um, with a surfactant, and that will dislodge, help to dislodge any insects if there are any on the surface of your of your produce. And then you check a certain amount of the water, uh, a third of a cup from three different places. Um, if you see bugs floating in there, then um, every single piece must be washed before you can use it. If you don't see any bugs, then you're good to go. You can you can go ahead and do it without without using without doing the whole produce check every single leaf. But lots of times I just check every single leaf. And there are times when I've gotten um, produce from the um, organic co-op that's been completely infested, especially aphid infestation. Um, I think I've seen aphid infestation um, in lettuce and in basil. Um, and that's, I, I've just not used it. It's just um, when, you know, you have a thousand bugs on a half a pound of lettuce, it just... It's too, it seems too overwhelming a task. Um, and I've called the, the, um, the, uh, <laughs> the organic food delivery and had them refund my money. They don't like that very much. They're like, well, it's organic food. What do you expect? There's bugs on it. But uh, I don't want to eat bugs. Um, and I've tried to work something out with them where, well, if it's infested, just don't send it to me. Um, that worked a lot better when I was working with a smaller CS, uh, uh, CSA uh, community um, sharing alliance with the farmer. It's much easier with a smaller one. 
So if you want to do that, I would recommend working with a with a local farmer, which you should anyway, right? Anyway, I'm out of time, so we'll see you tomorrow.